Hey guys, the moment you've all been waiting for is here. Uh, we're going to talk about the Kodak Duoflex. So the Duoflex camera, in this case, uh, the Duoflex 4, is a pseudo TLR manufactured by the Kodak camera company uh, probably sometime in the 1950s. What I mean by pseudo TLR is that at first glance this appears to be a twin lens reflex camera. You have one lens for viewing through the sort of waist level finder and then you have one lens which will actually fire and take the picture. Uh, that being said, this is going to function a lot more like a standard box camera than it is like a, any other TLR camera you might use. For starters, the viewfinder is extremely simple. Uh, the way it functions, if you try to focus on anything closer than at waist level, it's actually pretty nauseating and dizzying. Uh, on this particular model, there's no way to adjust the aperture, there's no way to focus, you're just going to point it and you're going to take your picture and what you get is what you get. I think it can be easy to forget that when this camera was new, uh, photography wasn't available to average people for a particularly long period of time. For a large portion of photography's history, you had to know what you were doing. You had to shoot large format. You had to know how to develop your film. Uh, you had to work with dangerous chemicals and, and know the chemistry behind it. What Kodak did and the brilliance of Kodak's strategy was to give photography to everybody. And that's reflected in this camera. It's extremely simple. You point and you shoot. It's got pretty low quality optics on it, even for the time. It's a, I believe a plastic lens on there. Um, really not gonna give you sharp images at all. Uh, but it worked. It was cheap even then, and, uh, and you could take photos with it. So, a long time ago, uh, in July, while I was still living back in Buffalo, my friend John and I took this one out to the Erie County Fair, which is uh, a big county fair held outside of Buffalo. Uh, I think it's the biggest county fair in New York or something like that. Uh, but we walked around and took pictures with it. Now, I got this camera from my mom and dad and they bought two of these at a garage sale for I think $5 total. Uh, and they possibly overpaid. Uh, the first one had some pretty big cracks in the frame and we considered putting tape over it to try and seal it up but it probably wasn't worth it. This one, there was a problem with the shutter, or with the uh, film advance here. So when you take a picture, it doesn't click the way it's supposed to. So it ended up winding the film backwards. So I bought some Portra 160 in uh, 620, and we went out and took pictures, and it actually worked pretty well. The film did not advance correctly, and what ended up happening was it wound backwards. And that wasn't a problem while I was shooting photos, but it became a problem when I tried to unload the film and it was uh, rolled exposed side out. I took it to a dark room, tried to wind it tightly, probably wasn't tight enough, and what I ended up with when I developed the photos were some pretty big light leaks across all the images. That being said, I think if you could find one of these for 10 bucks in good shape, uh, it's worth taking out or any type of box camera like that because the photos have a really I think a really cool look to them outside the giant streaks of light across them. The, the images from that have that kind of old timey look, which I, I think is a function of the curved uh, focal plane that the low quality lens creates, but it's a really cool look. And I think if you could find one of these in good shape for like $10, $5, buy it, load some film in it, take it out. You'll get some cool images, you know, in sort of that <laughs> hipster uh, avant-garde Holga quality. Uh, the other cool part about this camera, and, and one of the neat things, was everywhere we went, people asked us questions about it. And that's something I find that happens even with like my RB67, with any of the TLRs I've shot. People want to know. Uh, we were walking into the fair and the security guard goes, are you going to really take pictures with that? And I said, yes sir. Yes I am. So is it a great camera? No. Uh, should you buy one of these for more than $10? Absolutely not. Uh, even as just a decoration on your shelf. Uh, you're probably better off <laughs> spending a little more and, and getting a better camera. But if you can find one of these for under 10 bucks, uh, by all means, snatch it up, throw some film in it, go out and take some pictures. They've got a really neat look to them, uh, especially if you're, you know, you're not striving for super clarity, you're not striving for like the highest quality. Uh, it's definitely worth shooting with, you know, any of the Duoflex cameras, any other kind of box camera you can find. And, and honestly, throw some color film in because it, it looks pretty cool. So as always, if you enjoyed this video at all, 
uh, like, comment, subscribe. I just want to say thank you guys for all the responses to my video that I posted a week ago. It's been really great. Uh, I've taken it all to heart. There's definitely more stuff coming. Uh, some really cool stuff I think around the holidays I've got planned. So thank you. Uh, one a week. <laughs> We're one for one right now. Let's keep this going and uh, I will see you soon. Have a good one guys. How was it? <laughs> Corny.